morning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your food man. That's what I am. It's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. <laughs> And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All right, folks, we're back with you, and we have got Stephen Moore for RCS Productions, the Southeast leader in acquiring and providing national and regional talent uh, to festivals, concerts, and I'll guarantee you, if you have been anywhere to a concert, you have been to one of theirs. They've been in business since 1982. How are you, sir? We're doing well. Thanks uh, Thanks for having me. I know you couldn't get Springsteen on this morning because he was jetting off to Hawaii. So <laughs> the, the, the pinch hitting there. That's pretty good. I gave him like $5 million for a commercial that run three days. But, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> man, I love it. I guarantee it. So, how, man, how are you doing? I mean, you know, we've talked to a lot of different musicians and stuff, and they're hitting it kind of hard. But you're the guy that puts all these people on stage. And I know last year was pretty rough with the COVID stuff. So, I mean, what are we looking for next year? Or this year, I guess. It, it really was, you know, just to sort of recap in, you know, 2020, which we really don't want to do, but just kind of give everybody a context. You know, we were, it was almost a year ago, March 8th, uh, sort of when the uh, whole industry got shut down within literally 24 hours. And uh, major tours, you know, were yanked back off the road. And, uh, you know, we had about 200 uh, events uh, on um, on the, on our calendar that we were going to execute in 2020. And, uh you ended up doing 11, so um, you can imagine that's like a 94% drop in uh, in in activity. So it was kind of devastating, not just for us, but uh, you know, for for all the industry that uh, all the economics that the live inter- entertainment uh, supports. You know, the uh, hotels, restaurants, car rental agencies, airlines, um, uh, all the restaurants around the venue, even you know, even the um, convenience stores when you know you're hitting on the way to your your concerts. So. Uh, it's a, it's you know, it's a huge uh, economic hit to, to to everybody, not just the folks in the industry. Well, I, man, I, I mean, like I said, we've talked to a lot of different people, you know, that's in the music industry, and they're sitting there doing the live stuff on Facebook, but they don't pay anything. So, what do we got this year? You got any? I mean, is it looking better this year? We got some stuff on the books. It, it is. Um, you know, we're starting to see some activity uh, back about the second week of January. You know, our clients. You know, we we worked back in uh, March and April. Um, to uh, to move the shows to the fall, right. <laughs> and then we mar- uh, worked in uh, May and June to move them to 2021, um, and then we pretty much got um, um, you know pretty much got a lot of the the things that were supposed to happen in 2020 you know on the books for 2021. Um, that was sort of the you know the um, the goodwill in the industry was hey if you do have a date um, if you you have contracted with an artist or an event. You know, go ahead and keep that in- engagement, keep that uh, 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 contract in place. Just move the date. So, uh, almost everybody did, and uh, from the client and the artist standpoint. So, a lot of maybe you know, if folks had um, uh, tickets to something in uh, in uh, 2020 that didn't happen, and maybe they've got a refund, maybe they've got a credit with one of those big ticket agencies. Yeah. Likely, uh, pretty likely that something uh, something similar, maybe it's not quite the same tour, will come back, and mm-hmm. you can use your credit to. We are starting to see some activity. Um, I think Q1 and Q2, it's going to be a little bumpy yeah. um, getting going. Well, now you do a lot of corporate stuff too, uh, corporate events. How is that, is that? Did that slow down uh, or is that picking back up or what's going on with that? Yeah, we don't do a ton, but um, um, you know, probably you know, if there's anybody that's going to come back later than the live event industry, it's either cruises uh, and meeting planners and, and conferences. I think uh, – Major conferences this year are going to be tough. I think a lot of the, the companies have seen, uh, you know, say I think they'll um, they'll chalk it up to safety, right. um, but they've also seen that they can do these uh, without spending those those huge dollars uh, flying everybody to conferences and conventions, which is a shame because again, that's it's a huge economic impact not only for 
for a lot of cities and they need it. So I, I think you'll start to see some activity on that front a lot more in 2022. Um, of course, there'll be activity, but I think before we get back to 2019 levels, it'll, it'll be next year on the on the corporate front. Well, now I'd like to get kind of perspective of RCS Productions and kind of some of the events that y'all have held. Can you tell us some of the events over the past that you've held where these people know that, you know, that RCS Productions is actually one that put this on? Sure, yeah, we, we partner with a lot of municipalities, uh, small, medium-sized festivals. So we do Banjo BQ over in Augusta. Right. Uh, we do the Biltmore Estate Concert Series up in Asheville, uh, out there on the South Terrace. Mm-hmm. Um, the Atlanta Botanical Gardens Concerts in the Garden. We do the Gainesville location as well as the Midtown location. Um, and a lot of uh, Woodstock Summer Concert Series, which is the largest um, concert series, largest free concert series, municipal concert series in the Southeast. I mean, we'll have... Um, even if the Stephen Phillips band is playing, you know, we'll still have seven to 10,000 people out there on Saturday. That's a big event. There's a big well, event. Yep. <laughs> you won't chase him off if Steven's playing. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, it's I a good know. one. You know, we've, yeah, we've been at that one. I think this is our 22nd or 23rd year and it's really grown. You know, we grew out of the, um, out of the gazebo there and, and, and into the beautiful new amphitheater. Um, and um, you know it's 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 great. You know, we got a mixture of, of national acts and right. some more regional flavors. I think we've got everybody from you know Rumors, the tribute band this year, to uh, Christopher Cross, uh, Steve Canyon Rangers. So we really try to do a variety. Um, oh, I love that. We do a lot of those municipal. Yeah, we do a lot of those municipal events around the southeast. I'm gonna be that Christopher Cross. That's, that's gonna be a cool cool venue. And that's the thing about it down at Woodstock that that's actually a free concert. So you just show up with your uh, chair and, and enjoy the show. And it's a it's a beautiful place. So, but now you've been it in is, this since eighty you two, know. y'all. You've been in this since eighty two, so you've seen the ups and downs. So, what I guess what is the best time? It was the eighties better than the nineties, or the nineties better than the eighties, or as far as music. Well, you know, that, I think that's a preference. Um, you know, I would have to say, you know, two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen, from a business standpoint, was you know everybody in the live event business was. I would say crushing it. I don't think I'd be exaggerating if I said that. I mean, it was hard to find, you know, say a, a city of Atlanta, you know, I'm, I'm trying to buy for you know my clients and uh, an artist would have, you know, five to seven offers for the market at least, wow. uh, you know, if they were relevant at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, so there was a lot of competition in, in Atlanta. There's so many venues, there's so many events, you know, two or three big festivals that buy a lot of talent. Um, so I think uh, you know. So as far as a business standpoint, you know, eighteen and nineteen were were huge for the for the live event business, and we're we're looking to get back to that, you know, uh, beginning this year, and and hopefully the recovery in the next year. When I talked to a buddy of mine, and he said he'd read somewhere that like fifty percent across the country, big venues has actually shut down. Now, have you heard? Have, is that anything to that at all that you know of? Well, well, they've all shut down. Um, I don't. I mean, there's I say all. That's a big word. Um, most of them have shut down. I hear of a few, of, you know, a few that are opening and sort of throwing caution to the wind and, and trying to make something happen. And, you know, you, you know, we could debate whether that's a good idea or not. I think, um, you know, a lot of the folks that have built their brand as far as venues, mm-hmm. you know, were very wary of, of opening too soon. Uh, somebody, you know, somebody, you know, bad outcomes and, and then ruining their brand forever. So, right. um, um, I think, uh, you know, for your audience, outdoor is going to happen sooner than indoor. Oh, yeah. um, I think, um, and I think indoor is going to be slow. I think you're going to see uh, reduced capacity and we'll, we'll, you know, eke back into, you know, a bigger capacity maybe later on this year. Um, hopefully the, the venues, the indoor venues will start to open sometime this summer. Um, you know, a lot of chatter within the industry, Stephen, um, mm-hmm. and it's, yeah, I think we're debating over about 90 days. You know, is it going to be July or is it going to be September before, you know, we start to see a lot of activity indoors. I think outdoors will happen sooner. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I don't know, man. It's a strange time, and it's really, uh, like, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, restaurants and this, that, and the other, but the uh, entertainment industry has really took a big hit, a big hit, just like what you said. You went from 200 down to 11, and uh, that's a, that's a, of course, I guess you, I don't, did you, did you enjoy your time off? Well, not at first, um, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was kind of daunting. And then you're going, you know, you're kind of throwing your hands up. Like, what can you do when, 
you know, when all your clients, you know, said, hey, we can't operate or we're not, we're choosing not to operate these events. So, right. um, you know, through June and then, yeah, I mean, I became the, you know, part-time RCS guy keeping, you know, keeping the lights on and keeping engaged with my clients. And then, you know, house husband, uh, the other, you know, two thirds of the day. And uh, I guess you'd have to ask my wife how I did on that. But, yeah. so <laughs> I'm ready to get back to, you know, creating memories and, um, you know, uh, putting these events on and, um, and uh, getting people back out and enjoying uh, enjoying live music together, which is which is really the way you want to do it. Zoom just just doesn't work. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. Now, if we got people out there look, uh, interested in maybe some of these venues around here that uh, uh, that are actually listening, uh, tell them how they get up with you. So yeah, I mean, um, um, our Facebook page uh, rcsproductions.com, dot com is, is our um, is our website. Uh, our Facebook page is a little bit more active. Um, since we're not necessarily um, the promoters of the show, we generally post them, you know, a week or two before what we're doing. Right. Um, we sort of allow them to do it. Um, uh, I guess the first festival we've got out of the gate is down in Macon. The Macon Cherry Blossom Festival is happening. Oh, yeah. uh, so folks can, are interested in uh, checking that out. Uh, in April, we're following up with the Vidalia Onion Festival down in Vidalia. Um and uh, we've got Rodney Atkins, Daniel Bradbury down there. That's at the end of April. They're moving forward. A lot of our spring festivals chose to move to the fall or to 2022. But um, we're, we're hanging out for May, and um, I think Woodstock's planning on going forward. I think we're going to try to kick it off with Christopher Cross in May and and then go for it. Yeah. Um, well, that so we hope everybody will come out. Valdez, I mean, down at Onion Festival, that'd be the place to be right there, man. I love them onions. Golly. Steven. Yeah, we like to say we do like the produce festival, uh, uh, produce <laughs> aisle of festivals. We do the tomato, yeah. uh, we do crawfish, uh, we do uh, onions. I'm trying oh, to think man. what other. Now, other where's the crawfish do, festival at? Now you're getting into something I can get some teeth into. Woodbine, Georgia. Really? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so what, what is and it normally? Kingsland what? Catfish Festival is right next door, so... Um, I'm there. I'm there. So you notice that Stephen Phillips is really sucking up this morning, and he keeps dropping all kinds of hints that he wants the Midnight Express to, you know, to, to you to help them get a venue somewhere. You know, I can I see what's going on here, Stephen. Well, see, he used me on the indoor venue because not many people show up, so we don't have to worry about the social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, man, we appreciate you calling in, and I guarantee it. That's RCS Productions. This is a great guy, and like I said. Uh, Check out what he's got going on and uh, keep up with him because, uh, like I said, he is uh, the he's the guy that gets the people there. And I know a lot of these uh, these artists and stuff that promote stuff, but he does mm-hmm. a lot of different uh, stuff with that. So it's really good and interesting to talk to you. Kind of get a get a line on what's going on, uh, what I call behind the scenes. And uh, we sure do appreciate you. All right. Hey, we appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, thanks for the interest and thanks for having me on. Hi, man. You take care. Thank you for listening. This is Stephen Phillips, host of The Morning Dish. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot more interviews out there to listen to. Plus, you can listen online every morning at WGULradio.com or Lake 97.7 WJUL. And give us a like on our Facebook page, The Morning Dish.